Hello, friends. So, uh, Bible study, uh, the Niv, Acts chapter 15. It's going to be a long one because it goes 1 through 35. Uh, it's several parables, but it's important because it covers a particular subject matter. And, um, well, to me, it's like, okay. So, uh, to, to the demographics uh, that... Uh, do not share my biology. It's a very serious matter. Okay. So the council at Jerusalem. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. Now understand that in this culture, if you were to convert, even as a grown-up, you were required to go through a circumcision, which mostly in these days happens in the hospital as a baby. And um, these days would happen in the Jewish culture, again, as a baby. I think it's something like, you know, the 10th day of life or something like that, that they need to get circumcised. It's something in the, it's in the Old Testament. Um... This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers to go up to Jerusalem and see the apostles and elders about this question. Because it's like, you want me to get grown men not raised in our culture to do what? The church sent them on their way as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria. They told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the brothers very glad. Because remember, they're not hanging out in Jerusalem right now. Then they came back to Jerusalem. They were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders to whom they reported everything that God had done through them. Look at all these good works we did. Look at all these Gentiles that want to worship Jesus. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and are required to obey the law of Moses. Uh, the apostles and the elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips messages of the gospel and believe. Uh, God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving them the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them for he purified their hearts by faith now then why do you try to test god by putting on the necks of disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear like why do you want these men to cut themselves in a way that we don't even have to do because this is done when we are a child and we don't remember it. No. We believe it is through our grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. Like, we're not trying to turn them into Jews. We're all Christians. And that means some of those Mosaic laws don't necessarily exist for us. And they only exist for people who are still trying to keep Jewish custom. That's Jewish custom. Jesus didn't say anything about circumcising people. Now he didn't necessarily say that we don't follow Jewish custom anymore either. So they're making this decision in the early part of the church. What customs, what Jewish customs they're going to, you know, honor and which ones they're going to get rid of. We're now in verse 12. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul tell them 
about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. So proof that, you know, if they call upon God to heal a Gentile, it works. It's not just for Jewish people. Like technology is trying to be rebellious in the background. Uh, when they finished, James spoke up. Brothers, listen to me. Simon, and this is Simon who is also Peter, has described to us how God first shows his concern by taking from the Gentiles a people for himself. The word of the prophets are in agreement with this. It is written, after this I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. That's where the Ark of the Covenant lived. It's ruins. I will rebuild and I will restore. Well, I will restore it. Then the remnant of men may seek the Lord. And all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things that have been known for ages. And we got two footnotes in here, C and D. C, is, this is Amos, chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. And D is uh, 17 and 18. Some manuscripts have the word things. I think it's probably for the for the ages or these things I see uh, that's in verse uh, 17 actually not 18 it is my judgment therefore that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God instead we should write to them telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols from sexual immortality from meat of strangled animals and from blood for Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times, and it is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. So it's sort of like they're going to get the laws of Moses by being around a temple in the first place. Anywhere that there's a temple where there's Jews telling them they have to be circumcised, they can hear this. So they can get the messages they need. The next part here is called the council's letter to the Gentile believers. Uh, verse 22. Then the apostles and elders with the whole church decided to choose some of their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas called Barbarus. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. B-A-R-S-A-B-B-A-S. -A -A and Silas. Two men who were leaders among the brothers. With them, they sent the following letter. So this would be people from the Pharisee camp that are now Christians. The apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Sicilia? It's C-I-L-I-C-I-A. I, -I, -I, I see that, Sicilia, but... We, is verse 24, we have heard that some went out from us without our authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agreed to choose some men and send to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, and from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do of well to avoid these things. Farewell. Verse 30. The men were sent off and down to Antioch where they gathered the church together and delivered the letter. The people read it and were glad for its encouraging message. Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the brothers, meaning the Holy Spirit channels through them. 
after spending some time here, they were sent off by the brothers with a blessing of peace to return to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remain in Antioch, where they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. So remember that a prophet and a psychic are really have the same abilities. And the difference is one only turns their attention to the Lord, making themselves only a channel for the Holy Spirit and for no other being at all. Like we're all supposed to be being. Um, and a psychic will consult whatever energies are available in the room, regardless of who's talking to them. Usually because they don't recognize that there's different uh, signals. There's like two broadcasts that go out into the world. One comes from God. The other one comes from the opposition. The opposition thinks it's just slightly different from God because if it was totally different, we would know the difference. And he needs to trick you. He has no real power. He has only the power that you give him when you allow him to trick you into doing things that you know you're not supposed to be doing in the first place. Or maybe you haven't yet learned that you're not supposed to be doing in the first place. If you have not yet been taught that you should not be doing those things, then, you know, you're given grace. Once you're taught that you're not supposed to do those things, I mean, you're always given grace, but you're, once you're taught that you're never supposed to be, you're not supposed to be doing those things, you are expected to interact with your 3D world in a different way. When you know better, you do better. Once you've been told, you have no more excuses from God. And that grace gets a little bit different as he starts interacting with you in a different way. Because when he sends you a messenger directly, he sends you a messenger directly. So as we go about the world today, remember that just as the apostles here were building something new in the church and that required them to shed things that are simply not practical and not really necessary, only the perception that because they existed in the past, they must be necessary in our present moment and today. When you're starting something new, you get to decide what you carry with you and what you leave behind. And in fact, you can decide that in any one day, even if you don't think you're starting something new. We have the choice in any moment, and science defines a moment as 90 seconds long. So every 90 seconds of our life, we can choose to immediately correct ourselves, because that counts as immediately, correct ourselves for anything that we might have done with anyone we're interfacing with or any object we're interfacing with. Where we can choose to come at it from a healthier space, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, so that we are the better versions of ourselves. It's all a conscious thought, and no, it's not ever going to be easy, but it's always going to be worth it. So let's be the best version of ourselves that we can be today. And remember that we're allowed to get rid of the things of old that no longer serve our life in service to him.